Mole rose from his hole to greet the day, squinting his eyes in his usual way. And as they adjusted to the bright sunlight, he spotted a creature nearly twice his height. Good morning, Mole, said Mr. Ming. It's a lovely day, don't you think? Come a little closer and take a seat. I've set the table. It's time to eat. What's for breakfast? said Mole, who hadn't a clue. Not what, but who? said Mink. And that would be you. I see, sighed Mole. I should have guessed. But could I make one small request? If this is to be my last day and all, could we first go to the carnival? The carnival? said Mink, scratching his chin. That does sound fun. I've never been. We'll check it out. But when we're through, I have other plans for you. Got it, gulped Mole. I understand. At which point, Mink took him by the hand. They set out for the carnival, and by the time they arrived, the two were so excited they even high-fived. There were flashing lights and whirring sounds and very loud voices. Step right up. Strange tattoos and odd hairstyles, and even odder wardrobe choices. There were big balloons and crazy straws and drinks with funny lids. Parents with stuffed animals bigger than their kids. But it wasn't all the sights and sounds that really got them going. It was the smells they smelled that got their juices flowing. Mmm, what's that? Said Mink. It smells so sweet. Cotton candy, said Mole. It'll be my treat. The two of them gobbled down the sticky sweet confection as their noses were pulled in a dozen new directions. They tried gooey food and greasy food and lots of hot and cheesy food. Food on sticks and food in cones. They licked their plates and cleaned the bones. And just when you'd think Mink had had his fill, he smiled and said, "I'm hungry still." Alas, sighed Mole. But before you make me your main dish, would you be so kind as to grant me one final, final wish? There's more to a carnival than sweets and food that's fried. Before we call it a day, could we go on a ride? I suppose, said Mink. That's only fair. Then Mole replied, "How about that one there?" And there it gleamed in the bright sunshine. The anaconda. It sent chills down their spine. A roller coaster, said Mink. Are you sure? Have you ever? No, said Mole. But thanks to you, it's really now or never. Good point, said Mink as they approached the gate. But before they could enter, a man yelled, "Wait!" Without saying another word, he took the two aside and pointed to a sign that read, "You must be this tall to ride." Darn," said Mole. "I'm too short to go, but not you, Mink. You can ride solo. Go on ahead. Have some fun. I'll wait here until you're done." Okay," said Mink. "If you insist." So he buckled up, and the anaconda hissed. It slithered and it wriggled, and as the riders cheered, it snaked into a tunnel, and then it disappeared. But when it finally emerged, Mink's face was one big grin. He couldn't wait to get in line and ride the ride again. And as the ride came to a stop and hissed one final hiss, Mink jumped off the coaster to tell Mole what he'd missed. He exited the gate and looked all around. But can you guess who was nowhere to be found? Now where's that Mole? said Mink. He promised he would wait. I guess he really didn't want to wind up on my plate. I've got to give him credit, though. Even if he lied, he got his wish after all. He took me for a ride.